Well, it seems Monday nights are not really our own these days. Desperate Housewives is compulsory viewing for most of us, but just when you thought you got your life back at half past nine, along comes Grey's Anatomy. It's great, it's sassy, and it's a sexy take on the medical drama. So what makes it different from all those other doctor nursey shows? We sent Robin Jaynes to find out. A quick touch-up and we're away. No, I haven't done this in a while. This is one of the joys of being on a hit show, talking to journalists. Okay, and we're rolling. It's just not as glamorous as it looks, is it? Oh, it's not. <laughs> oh, my God, not at all. Television is not glamorous at all. It's very boring. We're just pretending to sew up bodies, and it's really not true. Oh, there it is. For the S1 vertebra. So do we think it should fix the problem? Mm. It doesn't look like there's any nerve damage. The Grey's Anatomy cast must be some of the hardest working in Hollywood. 17 hour days, the norm. Why are the hours so long? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I think that it's a 10 person cast, which is, you know, hard to fit into any episode. And then you've got the medical storylines. The surgery scenes themselves take up to 12 hours to shoot one surgery scene. So you factor that in and you've got maybe two or three surgery scenes in an eight day episode. You're going to be there a long time. I just, just need some sex, George. You know, sure, we get to see a bit of blood and guts, but the operating theatre isn't centre stage in this drama. No matter how hard you beg, I am not doing you. It's more about the mixed up lives of its characters. Some we love, some we love to hate. You know, I'm having a baby too. Yes, I am, a little boy. Maybe you can meet him someday. How's that sound? Does that sound good? <coughs> Pregnancy has not made me soft. I haven't gone soft. I don't do so. So you're the Nazi? I am. <laughs> and that's what people say when they see him on the street. So you're the Nazi. Is there any Nazi in you in real life? My God, no. <laughs> I need to find some. I'm just as wimpy as I can be. So even, you know, I try to pull her out every now and then at the post office or something, and I can't find it. No. <laughs> Izzy. Leave. Can we please just talk? You're too busy screwing nurses to talk. Just get out. So what is it about Grey's Anatomy that makes it so successful? It's not really a medical show. Uh, in those 43 minutes, we cram in a lot of life and personal relationships, falling in and out of love, uh, looking for love, looking for humanity in ourselves. Patrick Dempsey's hair. Um, <laughs> no, I, <laughs> I think it's a combination of um, the casting and the writing, uh, the style of the show, um, uh, and, and the way that it balances the comedy and the drama of it. Oh, there it is right there. That's pituitary. It's a rapke cleft cyst right there. So he's hyponatremia. Yeah. Excessive thirst is a common side effect. Water is what's been screwing up the ceiling level. It's causing a delirium. For Patrick Dempsey, a.k.a. Dr. McDreamy, working on a medical drama has provided all sorts of challenges. You overcame dyslexia, didn't you? Well, I'm still overcoming it, yeah. yeah. It's always difficult with the medical terminology. I always get it all backwards. Yeah. It's frustrating, but, you know, it's just... It's good because it forced me to work on the lines more so than most people, because I have to have it memorized. You just can never give up. That's the key is never give up. And, and the challenge just makes you stronger. What the hell is this? It's a key. Why? Why is it a key? Are we feeling existential this morning? Well, if a key turns in a lock and no one asked for the key or even wanted the key, does it make a sound? Just getting work can be a challenge for others. I mean, we often hear about sort of Latin Americans that have problems with, you know, getting work and the likes. I mean, has, for Asian Americans, is that a, an issue? Of course, I think if you don't fit into a Hollywood mold, or, an, or I should say just a, a mold of mainstream, and in this case mainstream, definitely we're talking about white America, uh, it's going to be more difficult. So it's a larger picture that... Is a, it's just a larger issue of of who is the who gets to tell our stories, and it's a part of what society is at this point, and it's a part of hopefully um, a wave that I would like to be a part of that would be changing the face of of, of who is on television and who represents our, ourselves. And how fast is it changing? Do you think? Slowly, very slowly, but I, again, I'm very happy to be a part of it. Sorry. 
This is Dr. Shepard. He's our head of neurosurgery. Oh, another Dr. Shepard. Mm -hmm. He's my husband, actually. Seriously? Mm hmm Wow. Look at you two. Everybody must hate you. Oh, you have, you have no, no idea. idea. Oh. But enough of the heavy stuff. It's just a telly show after all, and one with plenty of upsides. And you get to kiss Dr. McDreamy. Yeah, he's Patrick is just wonderful. He's a great guy. We have a great time working together. Is he a good kisser? Oh, you know, he's terrible. He's horrible. Yeah, yeah, it's a real problem. No, he's great. Yeah, it's lovely. Yeah, it's not a bad...